All right, so uh, in this video, I'm going to show you how to correct a jack that may sound like this if you've got an amp or another audio device. Okay, so we have a, a cold solder in there, and um, I've never owned an amp that hasn't developed this. One thing I have done, though, is I've started going to the right angle jack out of the amp, which helps uh, relieve some tension because there's not as much weight coming straight out, and it also will, hopefully will help... Uh, you know, prevent people from walking into it and so forth. I'm guilty of it myself. So let's go ahead and start taking this old backstage apart and see if we can get it fixed up. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do on this one here is I'm just going to unplug the reverb pan. Now, you know, all amps are basically similar. They're not exactly the same. So you'll have to go through your uh, amp itself and see what you need to unplug. Obviously the speaker, if you have reverb. Um, so I'm going to unplug the speaker here and I'm going to remember which... Uh, which uh, color wire goes on which um, speaker terminal so we can maintain the correct polarity. So on mine the blue is on the right. Okay. And that's it. Now I'm just going to uh, go ahead and remove these Phillips screws here. Which again, you know, your amp may be slightly different or it could be very similar. Okay. And I'm just going to leave these back ones in a little bit. Okay, and the reason why is I want to get these front ones out first. The front is sort of supported by um, being tucked into the front of the uh, grill there, between the grill and the cabinet. So we can pull the front ones, but if you pull the back ones, the back will drop kind of. So I'm just going to support it with my hand when I remove those screws. You saw that one come up, so you can see that the back of the amp's already dropping down. Hey, what you can do is you can kind of give some pressure from the front, try to wiggle it out. That's it. All right, let me uh, get the uh, cabinet out of the way of the speaker. Alright, so this uh, particular jack uh, is not exhibiting the same problem that I was expecting it to have. As a matter of fact, someone's already been at it and, and put uh, hot glue underneath the uh, solder position. So in this case, the, I've got it mounted backwards, obviously, and I've got the speaker plugged in. In this case, the jack itself had lost some spring tension. So I don't know, as I wiggle it around, if you can see that... Um, spring move up and down or not. So all I've done here, normally what I would do is take this whole printed circuit board out and then I would actually re-solder the pins as they come through the board. Uh, but in this case, all I really needed to do was take, uh, I'm not going to do it right now because the, the amp's on and in the place, but I just took a needle nose uh, single jaw like this, tapped on it with a hammer slightly without a jack in there and I basically re-bent that metal so it would apply more tension. So. Uh, it's not giving me any fits right now, so I'm not going to actually remove the whole PC board and resolder it because someone's already been at it with actually what looks like hot glue, so they must have had a problem with this before. So let me show you what I did here. Let me haul the amp out of here real quick. Alright, so what I found with mine is as I move the jack up and down, I realized that this top spring tension piece that goes on the tip on this tip sleeve uh, input was not making a good connection so as it wiggled basically there was times when this wasn't hitting so um, and that's why when I would pull the jack down it would make connection okay so what I ended up doing and this is probably not a uh, you know a, a, an official approved fix but this is like a 1984 amp I'm not going to put a whole lot of money into it I only use it occasionally I just took uh, needle nose just wind it out a little bit <clears throat> and I just took the jaw you could use anything that's small and flat and I just kind of gave it a couple of gentle love taps as I call it enough to bend it down a little bit more than what it was okay and the other thing I did was there's a little uh, there's a little metal tab that actually creates spring tension and sets into this groove on the tip and that's what 
gives you a little bit of tension when you pull it out. As a matter of fact, you can see I may have bent it a little too much. I bent that down a little bit. So I, again, with the needle nose pliers, I didn't use the hammer. I just took and pushed down on that tab. So now, this top piece is providing plenty of tension uh, on the tip of the quarter inch jack. So that was the fix on this particular amp. Um, I was fully expecting that it was going to be... Let me wind it out here. The legs on this jack going through the board oftentimes basically become a cold solder joint and that's from the vibration as well as the weight of the jack pulling down on it and vibrating and everything else people hitting it and ripping it out so what ends up happening is on the back side of this PC board so I'd have to pull all these knobs and pull the PC board out uh, you basically have to re-solder where those pins come through so uh, you can u even utilize the solder that's there uh, but I usually add a little bit more. Now what somebody's done, and you can almost see it there, is they took hot glue. And you'll see hot glue. There's hot glue there. I'm assuming this is all um, from the manufacturer. But they don't always put it on these jacks. So that's a couple of uh, possible fixes for your amp. I'm sorry I didn't get a chance to show you how to solder this one. Uh, but I'm not going to go through that process because mine's not having that issue. So, uh, so it could be something like this. Or it could be the solder. Uh, joints on these legs to the input jack. So hopefully this video has been helpful. Give, give a questions or comments below and uh, hit that subscribe button if you want to see more. And uh, have fun.